Hey, welcome to JG3 Reviews. My name is James. Here we explore the world of fountain pens, ink, and paper. And today I thought I was actually going to be fixing a dishwasher, but I broke a part that, next to the part that I was actually supposed to be fixing. And now while I'm waiting on the part that I was supposed to fix, I also am waiting on the part that I had to fix because I didn't really fix it and I accidentally broke it even some more. And uh, well, while I'm waiting, we got pens. This is the Hongdian M2. It is a little everyday carry sort of a pen, nice little short thing, anodized metal, all that good stuff, and uh, has a lot going for it on paper, things that I really like. One of those being that dark blue color. But as always, we're going to take a close look at the design, how it's made, how it writes, pros, cons, all that stuff, and then I'll tell you whether or not I think this is a pen that might be worth your time. So let's just get that camera spinning around, but not so much that I break that too and have to repair it and look at the pen. All right, here we start with our close-up of this Hongdian M2. Again, it is anodized metal, and it is a pen that has kind of a light weight to it, and yet does have a feel of quality and substance, and I kind of like that about it. So let's start up here at the finial, which is kind of maybe for me the funniest place to start. And I say it's a funny place to start because the first time I saw this, I honestly just saw the white, or in this case, it's more of a silver chromed look, the white cat on the finial. And honestly, to me, I, I thought it was farting. And I, I, I'm going to blame Pin BBS on this because the first Pin BBS I ever got came with a sticker of a farting cat that said, try it. And I'm still not quite sure what that was about. But anyway, uh, this is actually a yin and yang sort of a symbol. You've got the white cat, and then if you roll that over, you'll see what I'm talking about. You've got the black cat. But, you know, my inner third grader, you, you see what I see, right? And we all do have one of those, don't we? Anyway, once you get past that little finial adornment, you have basically a crowned bezel here. Let me put my finger back there to give it more contrast, and you can see what I'm talking about. Just a short crowned bezel, and then a taper on down that cap to the integrated clip band that goes around the pen, which is one of the things I really like about this pen. Now it looks a little bit chunky right here, and that's just a little bit kind of contrary to the, really what I think is a very well styled pen overall, but I'll take it because what it means is it has this nice spring loaded clip that is really easy to use, has a nice curve to it, so it just slides right over shirt pocket or a pin loop or whatever it is that you got there, maybe in your backpack, and uh, I like that, and so it's very well done and well integrated, and I like the black anodized look contrasting with this dark blue. I think that suits it well. Then it tapers down to the barrel, which looks pretty short, but is not actually as short as it looks. But before I go to that, let me just go back and highlight the branding on the pen because I like how subtle this is. It is Hongdian engraved in M2, and it's small and just there on the side. Simple font. I kind of like the font, especially the Hongdian, and uh, I think that looks pretty good. And when we go to decap, that is going to be one and about a quarter. So one and a quarter turns will get you into that pen. It does post, and you're going to need to post to write with this pen, or at least most of us are, and it does so very securely, and then you get a pen that is fairly average in length and comfortable to write with. I really like this longer grip section. The threads are far enough back, it doesn't bother me. Tapers down just a little bit into that flare, and I just find this a very comfortable pen to write with, and that matte finish keeps it from being too slippery. It is a little bit slippery, and I think some will find it, depending on your climate, and maybe even a little bit of personal sliminess. I mean, it's a real thing, you know, it happens. But overall, I find it to be a pretty comfortable pen to write with, and I've enjoyed using it over the last week. The barrel is fairly straight, does taper ever so subtly. Back here at the end comes to that curve, and then just a little flat top there at the end of the barrel. We'll get to that nib in a second. The threads are well done. The step down is not bothersome. It's there, but not too bad. There is, and you can feel it when you go to take the barrel off, a silicon O-ring and something really cool. Because this is a short pin, you might not have expected it to come with a converter, but Hong Dian has actually made a shorter converter. That's really not a big deal. It's just a shorter piece of plastic right here, but apparently it's a big deal to some manufacturers because they don't always accommodate that. And then it can also take 
the Hong Dian or Chinese standard 3.4 millimeter cartridges. It doesn't take internationals, but it does take the 3.4 millimeter cartridges. And now that brings us to the business end of this pen, and that is a number five steel nib. And this is a fine with a plastic feed and a really nice engraving. I'm not sure if that is kind of a lotus flower sort of a thing or a Chinese knot. It seems to me to be a little bit of both. But what do I know? I've had to cancel my appointment with the optometrist this week. It does say fine. There is this little banner that curves across and says Hongdian. I think that's really kind of cool. And it is a good nib. It is, you will notice, a fine with just a little bit of an upturn. And of course, this is also their standard number five nib unit, I believe, and so that would give you some options like extra fine, fine, medium, and possibly even a bent nib that would fit into this pen from Hongdian. But I've been really pleased with this fine nib so far. All right, at this point, you may be asking yourself just exactly what size is this little EDC pen? Is it the size, for example, of the Scrivener EDC pen? No, I kind of thought it was when I saw it in pictures. Very similar in size and shape to this. And while there is some similarity in shape, totally different size class from this pen. This is actually much larger than the Hongdian M2. What it's actually closer to is, and by closer to, I mean almost the exact same uh, length and barrel diameter as a Caveco Sport. And some of you may have already figured that out. This is a Caveco Sport sized pen. You could also compare it to what is probably my most common EDC pen, and that is the Gravitas, this one in brass. And there you can see that it's actually a longer pen than that. And certainly, since this one is brass, the Gravitas is a whole lot heavier than the Hongdian. Another pen I would compare it to in size is the Pilot Petite 1. Very, very similar in size. And actually the Hongdian M1, which I don't actually have, extremely similar in size and shape to the Petite 1. But of course, metal, heavier, and things like that. And then once you've posted these pens, you find that all of them give you basically an average sized or maybe a little bit smaller than average size pen. And you would write with all of these posted. You would not write with them unposted. And uh, I find all of these to be very different from one from another, but all of them to be pleasant writers in their own right. And I think the Hong Dian M2 does hold its own against the other pens in this lineup. Now, I will tell you this, my favorite nib is the Schmidt in this Scrivener, and then the other three all just kind of tie together. All right, just in case you're one of those weirdos who actually likes to write with those tiny pencils at the golf course, this will tell you just exactly how short these pins are and why you're going to write with them posted. The Scrivener is really the only one that I think is, is a good viable writer in terms of it being unposted. And that's certainly going to be true with the Gravitas as well. I mean, a, a quick little check mark on a to-do list, yes, but otherwise, you're gonna be posting this pen. All right, time to put it to the test. Fine, it's a nice smooth rider. You will hear just a little bit of audible feedback, not scratchiness like a smooth pencil. It is a fine. It is basically a number five. Check for wetness. Not bad at all. Now, one thing you will notice that as far as a fine goes, it is more like a Western fine than, say, a uh, Japanese fine. And I find that true of a lot of Hongdians. Kind of right closer to a Western fine. Ink today. It's a new ink to me. It's Monteverde. Blue skies. This is one that was actually included with the Monteverde Ritmo, which I will review with an Omniflex nib here pretty soon. Uh, but it's a, I like the ink. I couldn't put it in that Ritma though because it's a brown pen. I had to go with the brown ink. So I thought, you know, hey, why not the Hong Dian? And what's in the cup today? Let's do that. It's not a, uh, it's not a coffee today. It's actually a Scottish breakfast tea.
Basically, you know, if I've got tea in my coffee cup, it means that I've already had too much coffee, which you probably had already judged by the uh, video today. All right, so how about our speed test? I'm going to do this just with very light pressure just to see how the feed and everything will keep up. Doing this in real time as I go. Again, light pressure. Wow, look at that. This may be the first week in the last few where James didn't raise the pen off the paper. Look at that. Not missing a beat. And that's been my experience writing with this pen. As you can see, it writes well enough for a fine and wet enough for a fine. Just a pleasure to write with and uh, no issues. And of course, that's due to the fact that inside this quite long cap is also a plastic sleeve to help prevent things like that. And it does a good job. So really, any dry out's gonna be because of a long-winded man who didn't put the cap back on fast enough, right? All right, let's talk pros and cons. I think the first pro is just, this is a pretty sleek looking pen and I really do like the overall design and feel of the pen. Well put together. So the second pro would be, that I think it's good pen for the money, especially when you compare it to other pens that are similar. It was $15.92 when I paid for it on AliExpress, shipped to my door. I think that's quite a good deal. I really like the spring clip. It just works really well. It looks just fine overall. A lot of times you get a pocket pen like this or a smaller pen and the clips are removable or whatever or non-existent. And I really like that the clip is there, gives you that option. The nib, I think, was good. It's a good standard number five fine nib. It's not earth shatteringly good, but I have had no problems with it. It writes, as you can see, quite well, and I think that ink pairs with it really nicely. And so I have no qualms about that nib, but you know, if I did, at least Hongdian offers other nib units and I could swap it out to another size had I not been happy with it, but I am. Really have to give them credit for going the extra mile and providing a shorter converter with the pen. Now, I think that's especially good for Hongdian, where 3.4 millimeter cartridges are less convenient to come by in some markets, like here in the U.S., and so that's just a helpful feature. Any cons that I have for the pen? You know, uh, not really. For some, I'm going to go ahead and mention this again. Even though it is a matte-finished pen, with that coating, some people are going to find it slippery, but it's certainly less so than a shiny metal grip section or a chromed grip section. So it's better than that. So I'd say overall, there's just far more positive here about this pen than anything else. And uh, I would definitely encourage you to check it out if you like pens in this size class and are looking for one, uh, especially if you would like one with an integrated clip. I think that may be what differentiates it the most from other pens like this, and so that's something to consider. And with that, what do you think? Do you like the look of the pen? Do you like that clip? If you own the pen, what's been your experience? How do you like that blue ink? I think I need to do a review of that by itself here pretty soon, along with a slew of other inks. My backlog of inks to test is getting rather ridiculous. Maybe I should ask you, what ink do you want to see me review next of those that I've got just even sitting here on the desk? I have some Colorverse Blue Dragon inks. I'd like to get to those soon. I've got a shimmering Birmingham Pen Company ink. I've got that Private Reserve uh, Chocolat. What, what would you like to see me review? Or the Monteverde Blue Skies in this review. What do you think? Sheen, shimmer, blue, brown, green. What do you want to see next? And uh, I might not be able to get your specific ink, but maybe I'll get something that's in the wheelhouse. In the meantime, I hope that you have a great week. God bless you, and I'll see you in the comments in the next review.